Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Mommy E, your favorite grandma. Today, brothers and sisters, I am back to make a reaction. And this is in response to a suggestion of our viewer, this Hosini Mastur. I hope I pronounce your name right. So the video is Ibn Al Kayim's poem to Christians. But before I do that, let me first say a prayer. A prayer that was said by Pope Francis when he went to Iraq this March. This was prayed during the interreligious meeting with the other brothers and sisters alongside Muslims, Jews, representatives of different Christian churches and other Iraqi religious minorities. And the venue is the Iraqi city of Ur. Almighty God, our Creator, you love our human family and every work of your hands. As children of Abraham, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, together with other believers and all persons of goodwill, we thank you for having given us Abraham, a distinguished son of this noble and beloved country, to be our common father in faith. We thank you for his example as a man of faith, who obeyed you completely, left behind his family, his tribe, and his native land, and set out for a land that he knew not. We thank you too for the example of courage, resilience, strength of spirit, generosity, and hospitality set for us by our common father in faith. We thank you in a special way for his heroic faith shown by his readiness even to sacrifice his son in obedience to your command. We know that this was an extreme test, yet one from which he emerged victorious since he trusted unreservedly in you who are merciful and always offer the possibility of beginning anew. We thank you because in blessing our father Abraham, you made him a blessing for all peoples. We ask you, the God of our father Abraham and our God, to grant us a strong faith, a faith that abounds in good works, a faith that opens our hearts to you and to all our brothers and sisters, and a boundless hope capable of discerning in every situation your fidelity to your promises. Make each of us witness of your loving care for all, particularly refugees and the displaced, widows and orphans, the poor and the infirm. Open our hearts to mutual forgiveness, and in this way make us instruments of reconciliation builders of a more just and fraternal society. Welcome into your abode of peace and light, all those who have died, particularly the victims of violence and war. Assist the authorities in the effort to seek and find the victims of kidnapping and in a special way to protect women and children. Help us to care for the earth, our common home, which in your goodness and generosity you have given to all of us. 
guide our hands in the work of rebuilding this country and grant us the strength needed to help those forced to leave behind their homes and lands, enabling them to return in security and dignity and to embark upon a new, serene, and prosperous life. Amen. One, two, three. <laughs> So, this is 
Ibn al Qayyim's poem to Christians, and according to the content creator, Simply Zira, this is a poem written by the famous 13th century Islamic scholar Ibn al Qayyim. In the beginning of the video, it says, Were all worshippers of Christ, we'd like your most wise to answer our questions. But I don't claim that I am most wise to answer these questions, but I will try to the best of my catechism knowledge and to my faith in our God because I believe that we have the same God as it was mentioned by the prayer that I said in the beginning of this video. And in fact, it is our Pope, Pope Francis, who, who said that. So this God that you were asking what sort of God is that is a God that is both human and divine human and divine you may ask again why it must be so Jesus we believe is a God that is both human and divine and why must it be so that he must be murdered? Because Jesus must be a true man. Because he needs to redeem mankind from our sin. then why must it be so? Because when man sinned, we men must have the consequence of God's justice. But God is so loving that he does not want us to die all of us die because the wages of sin is death so that is god's justice that is acting then why still must jesus die to redeem mankind because the justice of god requires that another human of human nature should pay for sin. But why must Jesus take the suffering and die that brutal death? Well, the redemption must be accomplished by a righteous man because one who himself is a sinner cannot pay for others and we are all sinners from our ancestors adam and eve we are all sinners so no one no one is righteous. No one is worthy to redeem us. Only if Jesus will take our place. Why didn't the angels help him when they heard him cry out in pain? You see, this hour of suffering of Jesus is actually his hour of glory 
it is the culmination the ultimate sacrifice the ultimate offering and even God and the angels will be at standstill because this hour must pass the God of man who is without sin who is the righteous must suffer was Jesus pleased by what they did to him if so then blessed are they for they must have achieved his pleasure this is an hour of suffering of our God and he is a true man during this time of suffering who would be pleased to receive such a torment to receive such those weeping but we know the prayer of Jesus even when he was there hanging on the cross forgive them for they do not know what they are doing still his heart was on these people still his prayers were for these people but if he wasn't pleased with them then this must mean they overpowered him yes at first glance we saw that they looked like they overpowered him because they were able to kill jesus but who was victorious so was the present entity left without a god an all-hearing being who can hear prayers this was apparently to refer to jesus who was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. he was pleading to god father if possible pass this cup of suffering from me but not my will but your will be done so it was very evident that the human nature of jesus was at work on the first part of his prayer but at the last part he surrendered to god's will so we can say that the suffering of jesus is God's will. Was he left by God on that prayer? Of course not. Because during that suffering, angels were called to minister to Jesus, to appease his fear of the impending suffering and were the heavens vacated when he was placed under the earth and the dirt was above him now that's the beauty of the catholic faith because we believe that god exists in three persons and during that time that jesus the son is buried during the time that he was dead god is still alive and remember, Jesus is both God and human. So, if Jesus, the man, was dead, 
Jesus, the God, the divine, was alive. Therefore, the universe is still has its God working and is never absent. God is always alive. Even when God or even when Jesus, the man, was dead, Jesus, the God, was alive. And how could any wooden beam hold up a true God while he is being fastened to it? Of course, a wooden beam could hold the human body of Jesus. And that is what we see in all its depiction. But Jesus, the God, is a lot greater than the wooden beam. And could any iron ever be brought to him so that it would be driven inside him and cause him pain? I guess I already have answered this. Jesus subjected himself to all this pain and suffering. And all these created things have power on Jesus the man during that hour of his hour of glory. And did this Christ revive himself or was there another God that brought him to life? As I said, Jesus is both human and divine. So when Christ rose from the dead, it was from his own power, from his own divinity that he rose himself up. And that was our victory, the victory of all Christians and the victory of all those who believe in the resurrection. And even stranger is the womb that enclosed him before, which he rem remained inside for nine whole months in utter darkness being fed by blood. Then he emerged from the womb as a small child, completely helpless, reaching out to be fed. Now, this is the mystery of the Christian faith, the mystery of Catholic faith, the mystery of God, the mystery of incarnation, that Jesus, The God man must be born of a virgin, of course, because Jesus is also a man, he must be born from a woman. That's a very common logic. Does he ate, drank, and after he answered the call, which comes naturally. So, is this really a God? Of course, of course. Jesus is both God and man. And of course, he must do whatever a natural or an ordinary man does. High exalted is Allah above the lines of the Christians, each of whom will be asked about their fabrication. With due respect, Christians do not fabricate. Our belief is based on the witnesses of God's or Jesus' witnesses. And the Old Testament is about the prophets, God's messengers. Yes, Christians believe in the symbolism of cross because the cross is the symbol of Jesus' victory. 
God's victory. It is in the cross. It is in the suffering that we are redeemed. It is in the suffering in the cross. That's why we are now worthy of the promise eternal life. Then why don't you also prostrate and exalt the grave? The open grave symbolizes Christ's resurrection. And Christ's resurrection is the sign of the victory of God's promise. And it is in the resurrection that the Christians also rise. But there would be no resurrection without the cross. So that is our belief. That is my Catholic belief. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, I bid you peace. I bid you goodwill. It is never my intention to proselyte or, or re to repute whatever you say to the Christian belief. That is just my reaction. So, thank you for watching. And if you like, you may give me. You may give me a big thumbs up and also subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you on my next reaction.